Werner Herzog didn't have the most celebrated decade in the 2010s. I believe his documentaries were typically well received, although his fictional features were in for a bit of a hard time. In regard to 2015's Queen of the Desert, this was, of course, rightfully so. Although I cannot help but feel as though 2016's Salt and Fire was underappreciated. Watching Salt and Fire, one is immediately aware, oh, this is the kind of film which would receive negative reviews. It reveals its narrative information somewhat lackadaisically, the camera moves around everyone without relying on too many cuts or too free camera setups, and so this film could be just lazily dismissed as bad or incompetent by people who expect quality cinema to follow a select set of rules. Salt and Fire doesn't function like a typical Hollywood film. It comes across to me that a long-established creative filmmaker is simply being playful with how he can shoot narrative dialogue sequences. The acting is arguably not extremely natural, and even Michael Shannon's character, whilst interesting, doesn't feel like a believable personality, although this may not have been a necessary intent of Herzog's. For the most part, I enjoy this film for the visual variety displayed by Peter Zeitlinger's cinematography, Herzog's collaborator since 1995. Particularly in the final segment of the film, featuring its protagonist taking care of two blind boys in the middle of an enormous salt flat, some of this photography is just stellar. Salt and Fire's negative reception has actually done a lot of good in my eyes. If this film had been instead inexplicably acclaimed or revered, I don't know if it would have if I would have immediately seen why. Actually, I never would. I would forever refer to Salt and Fire as a fairly interesting Herzog number, which received way too much acclaim. Instead, I refer to Salt and Fire as a somewhat maligned Herzog film, which is actually really fairly interesting and quite filmically impressive. No, we don't have one of the best screenplays ever penned, nor the most audacious film production ever undertaken. They're quite impressive, evidently. What we do have is an absorbing, I think extremely interesting, experiment in Herzog narrative weaving. For a case study on how Herzog attempts to attach an aesthetic significance to his works, how he conveys a coherent spirituality between and across his edits, take a more minimal laid-back production such as Salt and Fire. Only a couple of sets or locations, a smaller cast, how does Herzog conjure prominence to his filmed places and players? Or does he? Many might disagree. This film was rather poorly received, as I've stated. I will say, yes, the plot of this film might make you think, Oh, well, I best think of this film negatively because its plot was inadequate or not up to scratch of other films' plots. Stop thinking in terms of plots. Plot only matters if the film insists it matters. Otherwise, people, if you want a story, read a book. That's what they're there for. We've had them for a very long time. The Bible is the most famous one, and some of them are really pretty good, actually. Worth your time, even. Okay, I'll need to quickly at least sell any viewers on Salt and Fire because I feel as though I may have been somewhat vague here. Treat this film as a tone poem, as an ethereal experience, not as something which might have plot holes or whatever the heck. You just sit back, relax, let it sink in. Don't worry about following it rationally or logically. Just let your emotional intuition follow the film. You might think, oh, isn't that a kind of the uncritical way of watching a film? Sure, why not? Hey, look, if, if, if anyone ever tries to question what you do, just tell them to go fuck themselves. Like, just, just become a hermit or something. I don't know. <laughs> hey, have a great day, everyone.